Space. Android Authority reporting live here from Barcelona Mobile World Congress. I'm here with uh, Christian Hamann. Yes. And he's the HTML5 spokesperson, sorry about that, <laughs> uh, with the Mozilla Foundation. And he has a hands-on demo of the Firefox OS. And we're going to be taking a look and diving in. So why don't you just start talking about it? What are we looking at here? What you're looking at here is a Firefox OS device. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very uh, low-level device. Basically, uh, the, if I had Android on it, the only Android that would still run is Honeycomb. Okay. So the idea of that one is that we bring web connectivity to people who cannot afford smartphones. So we bring emerging markets like South America is where we're going to start, Eastern Europe. So our idea of Mozilla as a foundation is to bring the web to people. Mm -hmm. And if right now this means that you have to have a lot of money for a new smartphone every two months, that's just not fair. No. So we thought it's a good idea to bring a platform into the play that could run on very, very low spec hardware, but still have a good performance. Of course, you can't compare it with a, with a, uh, with a Nexus 4 right now or with an iPhone 5, but actually the idea is that we want to replace uh, feature phones with this. So we want to get rid of the old Nokia, Samsung's, Ericsson's, Motorola's. People should be available, uh, should be allowed to be on the web and use the social web and not only play snakes and send their people text messages. Of course, yeah. So all, everything you see here, is HTML5, CSS, okay. HTML, and, uh, and JavaScript. All of it, the operating system itself and the applications. All, everything else in there is a Linux core, the same Linux core that's under Android yeah. called Gonk. Okay. And that gave us access to the hardware, and that way we, we got the apps there. You see all the apps that you would expect. We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got the uh, Nokia maps. The wireless here is a bit flaky, so sometimes it can take a while to load. Mm -hmm. But these are Nokia maps running on a device now with 256 meg of RAM and a 1 gigahertz processor. Pretty impressive. So that's pretty sweet. The other thing we have is that we uh, we are going to markets where people actually pay by the megabyte. So yeah. seeing that all the apps are HTML5, they're much smaller than their equivalents mm -hmm. in the Android market. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about that one is I don't have to actually install 32 Mac just to start tweeting. I can just go on Twitter and do that quickly. I also have a full control over how many uh, how many things I've already used and how many things are uh, how many of my megabytes are already used and what I used them on 3G mm -hmm. or Wi-Fi. And when I get into the one meg or something, then it starts getting red and I get alerts. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that when I'm on roaming, I'm not actually paying through my nose. Good. We have a marketplace much like anybody else. So like the Android marketplace or the iOS marketplace. One main differentiator is that you buy the app once and you can install it on many, on many devices you want to, on desktop, Excellent. on tablets, and on the phone. Because I myself, I hate that I have to de-emphasize uh, de one, one computer before I go to the next one. Mm -hmm. The really amazing thing though is, that instead of having to go through marketplace, as all of these things are HTML5, they can be indexed on the web as well. Yeah. Which means we have this system here called um, dynamic app search. So I can now search for a band, like I can search for U2 because I don't want to type many things in. And you see in the background I got U2, and it gave me the apps that are actually have content of U2, wow. like Groove Shark, SoundCloud, Wikipedia, or YouTube, or Metro Lyrics and Songkick. So I did not need to know the names of the apps. I just wanted to go from my content yeah. to the uh, to the app itself. I can then click on the uh, click on the uh, SoundCloud app, for example. I load the HTML5 uh, uh, mobile version of it to preview it. I play with the app. I play a song. If I like the app, then I can make then I can keep it. But I can actually just discard it as well. So it's actually the same way as browsing the web. We made app discovery and app usage as easy as using the web. Wow. Now, if I liked SoundCloud, I can go back to that, do a long click, and basically just install it on my device as well. So I can then install it to the home screen. This, would, this is not a bookmark like it is on iOS. Mm -hmm. This is actually just uh, putting, the, putting the app on my computer and doing all the app caching as well. It gets the data offline. So next time when I'm there, SoundCloud is much faster because I don't have to download, download the interface anymore because it's already there for me. Cool. So the benefit of all of this is that the phone will be very, very cheap to, to achieve and it is actually updating constantly as well. So I don't have the problem that a, a very low-end phone doesn't get newer versions of the operating system that no. quickly. And uh, we, had, uh, we, we worked a lot with our partners. We got 19 different providers that actually want to do it with us. We got things like Telefonica, Telenor and others. And we got four different hardware providers that want to build Firefox OS phones already. Okay, the other great. benefit, of course, is if I got Firefox running on my Android, any of these applications can be installed on my Android and run full screen as applications as well. So when do you think we're going to be seeing Firefox phones in the wild, though, to go to market? Uh, um, Autumn is the, is Autumn? the thing that, we're, uh, that our partners are uh, going for. We built the operating system. Yeah. We actually don't build the system itself. Okay. 
but uh, the the main thing is right now as a developer, I can pre I can get a uh, Geeks phone. You can actually go to geeksphone.com. Yeah, right. You can buy one of those yeah. and test them out. You can also flash uh, Firefox OS on on older Androids like uh, Nexus S and Nexus S2. That's what we used as test devices before. But the best way to actually get a, a phone with the same specification as the phone that will be in the market is one, getting one of those Geeks phones. You can build 90% of the app actually on your desktop as well, because there's an emulator built into Firefox, mm -hmm. so you can do it on a Mac, on Linux, on, uh, uh, on Windows, wherever you want to use it. So Firefox OS is basically bringing the web to the phone, rather than having the web as the last app on the phone that you just use when you don't find another app. So aside from ZTE, can you uh, share some information about the hardware partners? That uh, the hardware partners are Alcatel Lucent. Yeah. Uh, then we have um, well, who else? Sony just announced one. Sony, yeah. yeah. Sony UA announced one, LG. and LG. And LG. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Well, it is very, very cool that a year ago, this was an empty folder on our desktop. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, one year ago, we had a phone here that was a demo, and now we got so many partners and basically the phone's out. It's right. really, really very nice to see. Well, I wish you all the best, and we love your philosophy to bring more connectedness to you know, the rest of the world that doesn't necessarily have the economic resources to be able to justify. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, sir. Okay.